Well, praise the Lord and good morning and welcome to our Sunday morning service. And today I'd like to just uh, thank God for, uh, for you being here and praise the Lord for all things. God is good. Amen. Well, we are just so thankful and grateful to the Lord for a new day. And I just uh, have, well, we have several announcements to go over uh, before we get started in our service. So let's, uh, let's go to the Lord uh, actually after our announcements because we have some prayers too. So let me give you your announcements first. Uh, prayer updates. Uh, Marie Maynard is scheduled for surgery on Monday to put in uh, the fistula so she'll be able to have dialysis. So keep Marie Maynard in prayer. And Juanita Lane is having surgery on her left knee on Monday. So keep her in prayer for a full recovery as well. And uh, amen. Let's, uh, let's take and, and go before the Lord for these two ladies and for our service. And uh, then we'll get back to the rest of our announcements. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you and praise you today. Again, we thank you and praise you for each one being able to join with us today in the service. And Lord, we lift before you uh, Marie Maynard and Juanita Lane as they get ready to go into surgery on Monday for uh, two different items. But Lord, we just ask that your hands would be upon them, that you would strengthen them and help them through the surgery. We pray that you would give the, the uh, doctors um, in nurses, skillful hands in, in their care. And uh, Lord, we just pray for a, a speedy recovery for both of them. And God, we thank you. And we just put them into your hands. And also today for this service, Lord, we just glorify you. We ask that everything that we say and do that Jesus, our Lord and Savior, would be glorified. Pray that you would give us uh, wisdom and understanding in everything that you would have us study into your word. And Lord, we just thank you. You are so amazing to us. And we just praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Okay, well, I have some more announcements then. Well, first of all, special thanks goes out from Randy White to uh, Brian Lee and his friend. Uh, all of Randy's hay is finally in, and he's very uh, relieved at that, and just sends his appreciation out to Brian and his friend. Um, so just uh, being thankful for them. As well, uh, we have uh, updates. The Possibilities Pregnancy Center is having a virtual Night of Hope. The registration is free, and they'll have music, raffles, and stories of hope. If you'd like to register, uh, go to www.hopehappening.com or call 1-360-330-2229. That's 1-360-330-2229. Uh, the baby bottle boomerang continues through November 1st. Uh, please let us know if you'd like a bottle. Uh, we can drop it off to you or you can donate online. So, And you can also find out more about that on the Hope Happening. Just make sure that you indicate it's for Baby baby Bottle Boomerang. Okay, anniversaries. Uh, Ron and Louise Bates on September 13th. So happy anniversary to Ron and Louise. Uh, upcoming here and uh, also Christy Yee on the 13th here. Uh, well, today actually is for Ron and Louise and for Christy Yee. Um, Happy birthday to Christy Yee, and uh, and again, happy anniversary to Ron and Luis. And if you have a moment, uh, you know, give them a call, send them a text, let them know, uh, you know, that you're thinking of them. Happy anniversary, and uh, what a wonderful, blessed uh, couple they are. Amen. And today, uh, announcements, uh, evening service at 6 o'clock, Monday, encouraging word at 6, Tuesday, encouraging word at 6, Wednesday, Bible study, 6 o'clock, Thursday, encouraging word at 6, and Friday, biblical foundations class at 6. Um, also, I'm, we uh, the Knispels were starting their home Bible study, and uh, that was at 6 o'clock, so reach out to uh, Jason, Teresa, to find out when their next uh, Bible study is going to be, if it's this Friday or, or, uh, or not. And uh, make sure that uh, you link up with them. They really put a lot of time into getting prepared for it, going through the book of Exodus. So uh, you have some time. Just reach out to them and, uh, and uh, find out the details. Also, Saturday, Encouraging Word broadcast, 6 o'clock. Okay, praise the Lord. Well, we're very thankful and grateful to God. And if you have any other announcements that you'd like to get in, maybe there's something that you... Uh, you, you're like you would like to to get mentioned on, on when we do our announcements. Just send that uh, send a text or give us a call and send a text to Marsha or to me and give us a call. Let us know what it is and we can get that listed for you. Uh, again, it goes without saying. Please keep in prayer for uh, the wildfires that are going on and uh, the people affected by all of the smoke. We're still dealing with it today 
and uh, we're we're looking forward to some upcoming rain and in our forecast so just keep that all in prayer and pray for one another daily amen well uh, if you have your bibles this morning would you please uh, go to matthew chapter 23 we are still going verse by verse through the book of matthew and we're at uh, chapter 23 and we're going to pick it up at verse 13 now just to give you kind of a, a little bit of head up, heads up before we get into this section, this section is um, where, where the Lord is really taking the Pharisees, the scribes and Pharisees to task uh, for things that they've, they're doing and things that they're omitting. So the problem is uh, they were doing some things that were wrong. They were doing some things that were right, but they were omitting the things that were most important. And so we're going to go to that and, and take a look today and see what the Lord has for us here in Matthew chapter 23, starting at verse 13. We'll read down to 33. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye compass the sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Woe unto you, you blind guides, which say, Whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing, but whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. You fools and blind, whether is greater the gold or the temple that sanctifieth the gold. And whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing, but whosoever sweareth by the a gift that is upon it, he is guilty. Ye fools and blind, for whether is greater the gift or the altar that sanctifieth the gift. Whoso therefore shall swear by the altar, sweareth by it, and by all things thereon. And whoso swear by the temple, sweareth by it, and by him that dwelleth therein. And he shall swear by heaven, uh, sweareth by the throne of God and by him that sitteth thereon. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye have to done and not to leave the other undone. Ye blind guides which strain at a gnat, strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear out beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so ye outwardly... Um, even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous, and say, If we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill ye up, then, the measure of your fathers, ye serpents, you generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? You know, the, these are stern words from the Savior. You know, there is some that would say, you know, well, Jesus, uh, you know, Jesus wouldn't, wouldn't be, you know, so uh, direct, but he, he was direct. He was very direct. You know, there is love and there is kindness, but there's also a time for um, rebuke. You know, the Bible tells us, you know, we're to reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. So there is a time for rebuke, and this is what the Lord is doing here. He is he's trying to get the Pharisees, the scribes and Pharisees, to understand and realize that they have erred. They they have they have lost sight of what's most important. And they and, and they got themselves into this uh religion rather than a relationship with God. They were doing the things outwardly, but inwardly no relationship with God. And that was a big problem. And it's also a warning for us today to make sure that in our lives that we don't get to that place where we are just doing things outwardly, but we don't have that inward relationship with, with Christ. You know, 
that's a big danger, you know, to just get monotonous in your in your serving the Lord. It shouldn't be that way. It should be a living, live relationship. You should be on fire for God, loving the Lord Jesus Christ. You should that that love for Him. Um, you, you you show to others. You demonstrate it in your life. You know, James. You know, faith without works is dead. And so, you know, the works that we do are not to save us because we're we work because we are saved you know we work because we love the lord we're appreciative we're so appreciative of what he's done for us so we work for him but let's go back here to scripture verse uh, 13 but woe to you scribes and pharisees hypocrites for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men for you neither go in yourselves neither you suffer them that are entering in uh entering to go in you know they were these were experts of the law. These were experts of the Old Testament. They should, they, they, they understood. They read the law. They read the prophets. They read the Psalms. You know, in in Proverbs, they should have known who Jesus was. They should have, instead of trying to fight against the Lord Jesus Christ, they should have been gathering around him and, and encouraging as leaders of the people, they should have been encouraging the people to come to Christ, but they were discouraging mm -hmm. people to come to Christ. They were pushing people away from him. They were hindering people from coming to the only way of salvation. There's only one name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved, and that's Christ Jesus. They, they were trying to keep people from coming to Christ. You know, even today, there's there's those in religion that will try to keep you from coming to a relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, they'll say, well, you got to go to, uh, you know, our particular denomination or our particular. That That's a lie. It's a lie straight out of the pit of hell. It doesn't matter what the name is above the door. What matters is what's coming out of that pulpit. Are they preaching the word of God? Or are they preaching man's ideas and man's thoughts? You know, man's, man's doctrines and teachings, you know, because... I, I could, you know, take all of man's teachings and toss them in the trash because the only ones that matter is right here because these are the words of life. What God gives you in the Bible, that's life. You know, you, you get, you get, you understand how to be saved through Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. You know this from the word of God. You know, if you go by man's things, man, man will throw all kinds of craziness on there. You know, and, and we don't need all that. We don't need a, relig a religiosity. What we need is a relationship with Jesus Christ, a living, vibrant relationship with Christ. And you get that by what? Coming to the Lord Jesus Christ, repenting of your sins and trusting him as Savior, and then obeying his word, obeying what he said for you to do. Man, it's 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 not a it's not a difficult thing, you know, in our lives. We we should live a life um that shows that there's something's happened in us, you know. I mean, there's these Pharisees, man, they they knew the Old Testament, man, they knew it. They knew every little part. Matter of fact, they they knew it so well they were trying to figure out ways to get around having to do certain things, you know. It's a shame. They they missed the point. And so it's a warning for us not to miss the point. So let's get back to the scripture. Verse 14. Woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore you shall receive the greater damnation. You know, these guys actually would spend like three hours. This is what's recorded. They would spend three hours in prayer, right? Three times a day. But it wasn't just straight prayer to to the Lord, you know, from the heart. No, no, no. This was a this was a rote prayer, like a uh, you know rehearsed thing. And they thought that you know what what just like the Lord says, you know, they think that they'll be heard for their much speaking, you know. And that's not it. Did the Lord Jesus pray? He prayed. Man, he sometimes he prayed all night long. So the length of the prayer, not it. Whether it's a shorter or longer, we're supposed to always be in prayer, right? You know, we're supposed to. Um, be constant in prayer. But the problem is, is these men were praying just out of like a repetitious, you know, a repetitious nature. And that's a problem. If you find yourself getting into that when you're going to prayer and you're praying the same thing over and over and over again, uh, you need to stop that. Uh, you, you, you need to go to God with your, with your, from your heart. You know, what if, you know, what if you called up, you know, your friend on the phone and you said the same thing over and over and over again? For like three hours. I mean, probably your friend's going to hang up at some point. I, mean, I would imagine. And, and it's, it's like, listen, when you go into God in prayer, speak from your heart. Speak from your heart. Go from here and, and pour out your heart to him. 
the Lord knows what you have need of, but he wants you to ask. So ask him, be constant in prayer, praying for others as well. Praying, don't just be focused on you in prayer, but pray for other people, intercede for them. You know, that's a, that's a wonderful way to spend time before the Lord is praying for, for the needs of others, even for yourself. Amen. Love, love does that. Amen. Widows though, um, widows here were being abused by these guys. You know, these false uh, religious uh, Pharisees. Let's see some warnings in scripture. Isaiah chapter 10. In Isaiah chapter 10, he gives them a warning here. Verses 1 and 2. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees and right uh, grievousness which they have prescribed to turn aside the needy from judgment and to take away the right from the poor of my people that widows may be their prey that they may rob the fatherless. God is not happy with these guys and he's prescribing a woe to them in Isaiah because of the way that they were treating the widows and the, and the, uh, and the orphans in, in that day. And the Lord says, Exodus chapter 22, he's got something to say about it. Let's go to Exodus 22. And uh, verses 22 and 23 is what we're going to look at. Exodus 22, verses 22 and 23. Ye shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child. If thou afflict them in any wise, and they cry at all unto me, I will surely hear their cry. You know, God's ear is open to the widow and to the orphan. And these men were abusing these people, you know, instead of being there to strengthen them, to encourage them, to, to be there for them. And, you know, I mean, it's, it's a sad, I mean, it's a sad thing. The church should gather around those that have been bereaved, you know, the, the, the widows that have, you know, have had, uh, you know, husbands pass on, you know, in the same thing, same thing, if a widow was a man, you know, the same, same way, you know, people should be gathering around those that have lost loved ones, strengthening them, helping them, encouraging them, giving them scripture and supporting them. This is what the church should be doing and, um, not, not, not doing right. You know, so hold on for one second. There's a phone ringing. Well, it is that political time of year, and apparently they thought that they needed to call and, and solicit campaign things. I would really encourage them to go to the Lord. But, um, amen. But, you know, this is, this, this is what we're talking about. Orphans, too. You know, orphans um, should be strengthened, taught about the Lord, shown the love of God. And this is something that, sadly, um, it's not being done a lot today. And we need to do that. We need to do a better job that, of that as a church because, you know, we see the scribes and Pharisees failing in that in a big way. And then verse 15. Let's go to verse. Oh, go back to Matthew 23, verse 15. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you compass sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he is made, you make him twofold more child of hell than yourselves. <laughs> big problem with this. You know, okay, so first of all, Good on the on the Pharisees and the scribes for one thing, that they were compassing sea and land to make one proselyte, to 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 go and and try to bring one person uh, to to faith. You know, this was, I mean, a lot of Christians today won't go over sea and land to try to win somebody to Jesus. Matter of fact, they don't step out of their uh you know out of their living room. Matter of fact, some of them don't even use the the uh, opportunities that are available to us today, like today, maybe you're locked down with COVID, but you're, you're still not uh, prohibited from reaching out in faith to somebody, maybe on social media, or maybe calling somebody that you know that's not walking with the Lord, just to, you know, not to call them and beat them up, but to call them and talk to them, you know, talk to them about the Lord gently, lovingly, bringing them to the Savior. I mean, there's things that you can do, but uh, even when, when COVID is not, a factor involved in this how many people will compass land and, and sea to to go and, and try to win somebody to jesus you see this see the problem today is the church has gotten away from evangelism gotten more into self-improvement in in church building 
you know, rather than winning people to Christ, getting people into the kingdom of God. And that's important because, you know, any time that we, we reverence uh, doing anything other than, I mean, when we reverence like building denominations, right, we're missing the point. It's not about building a denomination. It's about bringing people to Christ so they can have eternal life. And so it has nothing to do with, like, I want to spread, I want to build churches. Well, okay, if you're building churches, here's the thing. Building a church is a good thing. I, I, yeah, that's a great thing. Wonderful. But what are you putting in the pulpit? Are you putting people that come out of seminary that don't even believe in God? That, that are so that that are so out there that they they accept and allow everything that God calls evil? I mean, are they preaching the word of God? Are they preaching self-help? Are they preaching business models? What are they preaching? You see, we've got to preach this, the word of God. And if they're building churches and putting men that love the Lord and love his word and will preach his word uncompromisingly in those pulpits, then praise God for that. Amen. Hallelujah. Right behind them, encouraging them. But if they're going to put somebody in a pulpit that's going to give you 40 days to this and 40 days to that and how to have your best life now and all of this other uh, garbage, yeah, I'd rather they didn't build it. I'd rather they just have sincere believers out there trying to win people to Jesus because it's better that way. Because when he, he, I've, I've been in those churches where they, it just propagates lie and lies you know deception we don't need that we don't need more of that we don't need people up there naming and claiming it and blabbing it and grabbing it we don't need all that we don't need people to canvas neighborhoods to find out what they would like it to be aesthetically pleasing in a church so that they will attend we don't need that we need people to get out there and share the gospel of the lord jesus christ to let them know that there is salvation available to them if they will repent and trust Jesus. We need to do that. And uh, yeah, they, yeah, I, I'm, I'm thinking getting out there and feeding people is wonderful. Praise God for that. I, I thank God that there's uh, churches that do that. They get out there and socially, you know, trying to feed people, take care of people, clothe them, give them blankets and, and you know, coats and stuff. Well, we need to do that. But if you're only doing that and you're not giving them the gospel, then you're cheating them. You're cheating them. You need to give them the gospel because that's the most important thing. And then don't leave the other undone. Do the other two. Feed them, clothe them, help them. But give them the gospel first. It's the most important need they have. Don't forget to do that. Okay, let's keep going. We got a lot to read. Verse 16. Another problem Pharisees get. Whew. Woe unto you, you blind guides, which say, Whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he's a debtor. You fools and blind, whether is greater the gold or the temple that sanctifieth the gold. And whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing. But whosoever sweareth by the gift that's upon it, he is guilty. You fools and blind, whether is greater the gift or the altar that sanctifies the gift. You know, God is trying to get them to see, hear, and understand that their judgment was all kind of messed up. You know, their, their, um, the gold that they're talking about, you know, remember how um, the child was trying to get away from responsibility of taking care of the parents, saying it is Korban. You know, Korban is that, that set apart, it's that gold that's set apart for, for God, for service to God. And these guys were trying to get by their responsibilities of, of honoring their parents by, uh, you know, figuring a way out. And, and these and these guys here too, this is what they're doing with this. You know, um, in, in the Lord Jesus, he's bringing to their attention here. He says, what's, what's greater, the gold or the temple that sanctifies the gold? The, the sacrifice or the altar that sanctifies the sacrifice? So he's, he's trying to get them to understand what is most important. You know, and, and to rightly, rightly judge. They weren't rightly judging. And these were leaders of the people. They were supposed to rightly judge, and they weren't. And this was a big problem. And, and we have that today, too. You know, we have, we have uh, people overlooking the most important things and focusing on the things that don't matter. You know, th th little things that not important. You know, it's, 
it's um, it's amazing. It's amazing that that happens. The most important thing today is is telling people about Jesus Christ, presenting the gospel. That's the most important thing. But if you're going to go out there and, and preach your denominational distinctives, you've done no good. You've done you've done no one any help. Preach Christ, Him crucified. Preach the Word of God. Go into all the world and preach your denominational distinctives. He did not say. He said, go ye into all the world to preach the gospel to every creature. That's what you're supposed to be preaching. That's what you're supposed to be standing on. You know, the word of God. It's, it is honestly um, shocking to me that uh, you have people going through uh, seminaries today and um, in this nation. And they'll go in. They'll go in. As a Bible believer, got born again, you know, wonderful relationship with God. And they go into the seminary and they come out on the other side not believing anything. How does that happen? It's because there's wolves in those classrooms teaching those classes. Not telling people to believe the scripture, but they are they are bringing in... Um, they're liberal the, uh, theologians who don't believe what's written. They don't take it literally. They they allegorize everything. They explain away anything they don't like, and and they get people to come to a place of of you know crisis in their faith because they just rip apart people's faith. And and it helps them today with with the plethora of of false uh you know versions of the bible twisted versions where people go in and just engineer it the way they want it engineered and uh to to present whatever doctrine they would they favor you know this is what's going on you know and uh it's a shame you know i don't read anywhere anywhere in the new testament um where these men spent their time in seminary before they went and obeyed what God told them to do. They just went and did what God told them to do. Go preach the gospel. Okay. What's your qualification? The word of God. That's it. Go preach the gospel. And so every believer has this responsibility, not just a pastor, not just a preacher. Every, every Christian has a responsibility. Whether you're male or female, you have a responsibility to share the gospel. Amen? So don't, don't even, you know, don't think that you don't. You do. Amen? You're young or old, you have a responsibility to share the gospel, the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, there are some out there that will make excuses. Pharisees did. They tried to figure their way out of it. You know, they tried to come up with some reasoning. But the way I look at it, if you're still here, you got a job to do. We're still working in his field. And if he hasn't called you home, then you still have a responsibility to work. Amen? And the work is the work of the gospel. Doing good. Yeah, but these guys, they, they missed it. They missed the point. They really did, and it's, it's, it was sad. Uh, let's go down to verse 23. Uh, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! You pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of law, of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. Now, I I looked it up because you know, um, you know, I anise. I wanted to make sure you know what it was, and and you know because I I've heard of this, but um, actually this word, uh, this Greek word, actually means dill. Dill, I like dill. I like dill and pickles and stuff. We have dill growing in our yard right now. But what, what these guys did was they paid attention to what the, the law said about tithing to the Lord. Um, and they took, uh, they took the tithe of mint and anise and cumin. Now, here's the interesting thing. These grow, these herbs grow, and they were very meticulous about that. 10% goes to God, and they were very careful with that. And they did that, they did that correctly. They were giving God what belonged to the Lord, bringing in the first fruits of the harvest. They did that. But they neglected the most important things, which Jesus calls them on it. And he says, 
He says, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought you to have done and not to leave the other undone. So he's saying what they were doing with the tithing of those those um, herbs and things, that was good. That was what they were supposed to do under the law. They, they were supposed to do that. But the other, which they omitted, judgment, mercy, and faith, they should have been doing. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1. Verse 17. It says, Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. These are things that they should have been doing, right? And he's saying here, learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. These are these are right things in God's eyes that they should have been doing. And it was it was they had that in the Old Testament. How about Jeremiah chapter 22? Jeremiah 22. Go to verse 3. Thus saith the Lord, Execute ye judgment and righteousness, and deliver the spoiled out of the hand of the oppressor, and do no wrong, do no violence to the stranger, the fatherless, nor the widow, neither shed innocent blood in this place. This is what he was telling them to do. Again, these are things that they should have been doing, and they weren't. They were oppressing the widows. Jesus already called them on that. They weren't exercising uh, righteousness in, you know, in, in they were they were oppressing. They were oppressing the Lord Jesus Christ. They were doing wrong. Zechariah. In Zechariah, it says, it, it goes in and talks about the same, same thing. Let's go to it. Zechariah chapter 7, verses 9 and 10. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment, and show mercy and compassions every man to his brother, and oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor, and let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. I mean, they had this. But they were already in their hearts conspiring to kill Jesus. They, they were persecuting the widows. I mean, they were taking advantage of them. They were, they were not executing true judgment. They, they weren't rightly judging. Because had they exercised right judgment, they would have seen what the Lord Jesus Christ was doing and who he was. But they didn't. They didn't show mercy and compassions for their brothers you know, this is warnings to, for us today. We can get so legalistic in our way of thinking that we think that we're right and everybody is wrong. And that's not the case. It's certainly not the case. Thanks be to God for the people of God around this planet that stand up for the Lord Jesus Christ, that, that stand up for his word, that preach his word in love and care and compassion because they know that they know if a person doesn't come to Christ, they're lost, eternally lost. What drives people, obedience to the Lord, yes, compassion for souls has to be. If you don't care that there are people dying without Jesus, if that doesn't strike you, if it doesn't cut your heart, then you need to examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. You need to examine yourself because you're not exercising love. You should love people enough. Your heart should go out to people. People that die without Jesus Christ should be a horrible thing for you. You know, I see these, um, 
I see these people that are lifted up by society. Society lifts up um, political people, sports people, um, actors and actresses, musicians. They glorify these people. They lift them up on a pedestal. But that person shouldn't be glorified. There's only one that should be. His name is Jesus. He should be glorified. And those ones that we lift up, you know what they need? They need Christ. Sure, the popularity of the world is one thing, but that's fleeting. It only lasts for a moment. You see how that works. One day a person's popular, the next day they're forgotten. Right? But in Christ, you know what? We're, we're, we're storing up our treasures in heaven. You know, we're doing what we do on this earth for Jesus, not for our glory, not for what, so we can say, look what I have done. It's about what Christ has done. It's what he has done. He saved wretched sinners like us. He, he saves us from our sin, our sin that was dragging us to hell. He saves us from, he delivers us. He gives us life, an abundant life. Sure, you're going to have tribulation in this world. Sure, you're going to have tough times in fiery trials. Those things are, are a small, just a small, you know, not even worthy to be compared with what God is going to do in you, in Christ, throughout eternity. So we have a little tough time now. It is well worth it. It is well worth it. Whatever it is, whatever cross you have to bear for the Lord in your life, whatever it is, it is well worth it because we are in Christ. We gain Christ. Not to say that your works earn him like that. That's not what I mean. So just make sure you understand that. It's, it's faith in him. Faith in what he's done. Faith. You know, faith will take you through. Take, faith will take you through. No matter what you're going through, faith will take you through. Lord, I don't understand everything. But I know this, I trust you. And I know you work all things together for the good. Amen. So, to those that love God and that are the called according to his purpose, is the rest of that verse. Okay, um... Let's go back over to uh, Matthew 23. Let's take a look at verse 24. And, and, and you know, and I'm just telling you, those scriptures that I shared with you about judgment and mercy and faith in the Old Testament, but that wasn't all. There's also Micah 6, 8 and, and Habakkuk uh, 2, 4 that you could look at when you have time. Go back and take a look at that. But, you know, again and again throughout the Old Testament, he's telling them to do this. They had the Old Testament. Matter of fact, these were experts of the law. They knew it. They didn't do it. That's a warning for us, too. So back over to Matthew uh, 23. In verse 24, he says, You blind guides which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. I mean, the... The illustration is great, you know. They're straining at a gnat, but they're swallowing a camel. Now, one of the things that they used to do was um, they would make sure they were very careful. They were very careful in, um, you know, obeying the law. And so if anything, um, like, would contaminate their beverages, their drinks, whatever, you know, throw it out, you know. So, like, with, with uh, flies, you know, they think anything the size of a lentil you know, needed to be strained out, you know, or you had to get, I mean, there's all kinds of like ceremonial things these guys were trying to do. And the Lord is kind of, you know, letting them know you guys are, you're straining at the, the smallest thing. And then you're swallowing the, the biggest thing. The camel was the biggest land animal in that, in that region, right? It's the biggest example. And then Nat being the smallest and they're getting tripped up on the small little things, but the big things, which they need to really be paying attention to, they're not seeing. And that's for us too. You know, we can get we can get tripped up. I mean, the church used to, back years back, and I still actually still remember some of this, and I'm pretty sure that uh, some of you do too, where 
like if you didn't come in dressed a certain way, like for men, if you didn't have a suit and your tie and you weren't looking a certain way, and ladies, if you weren't dressed with a certain dress and a certain length and a certain hat or whatever, then that was a problem. Really? Because that's not what the Bible talks about. It, it certainly doesn't give that outline. We're supposed to glorify God with our bodies, thank God. But, uh, you know, he doesn't say, well, if, if you're not wearing a three-piece suit, then you're not getting into heaven. <laughs> it's not what he says. They get tripped up on those on those those things, like the the preacher that told the the homeless man that came in, and he he came into the service, sat in the back, his clothes stunk. He was you know he he'd been out you know he'd been homeless. I mean, what are you gonna do? And he was out there, and he's and he came in and uh, and listened to the message, and broke down and repented of his sins, trusted Christ, and one of the deacons of the church came up and said came up to him and says, you know, if you go home, take a shower and get changed, uh, you come back in here, the Lord will, Lord will save you. Well, that deacon was so far off the mark. You know, he needed to go back to the Bible and find out that uh, he was being one of these scribes and Pharisees. That was him. You know, God will save a man or woman regardless of whatever state you're in. It doesn't matter. You can be in the lowest of the lowest of the low states in, in life. And matter of fact, if we're in sin, we are, you know, God can save you no matter what, no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, God can save you if you turn to him. And the Lord doesn't look at the outward, He doesn't look at the outward, he looks at the inward. He looks at the heart. Is your heart tender towards God? You know, that deacon was further away from being right with God and he was just like that Pharisee that stood in the temple and saying, you know, I give tithes and I do this and I do that. And, and I'm not like this, this publican over here. And the publican over there was beating on his chest saying, you know, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. The publican was right before God and not the Pharisee. God demands humility. Right? Remember, we're broken people all of us and we need the savior to fix us and that's a constant work you know people talk about being saints and sancti sanctified being a saint sanctified sanctified one uh, sanctification that's a process man and your life is always going to be god's always going to be fixing you there's stuff in your life. You know, thanks be to God that he doesn't show us how how absolutely messed up we are in, in our lives all at once. Right? But little by little, he shows us through his word. It's called the washing of water by the word. He shows us and teaches us where where in our lives we need we need to be fixed. He shows us this. You know, yes, we have redemption in Christ. That's justification. Yes, we're justified in Christ. Thanks be to God for the blood of Jesus that cleanses us, washes us from all sin. But even at that point, you're not fully mature in Christ. You're still growing. You're a babe. You, you're still walking with him. You're learning. You're, you're growing. This is why, don't be so critical. Don't be so critical, your brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, maybe the thing that you've learned, they haven't learned yet. Maybe the thing that they're learning, you haven't learned yet. You know, you're growing in Christ. It doesn't license uh, departure from his word, right? Because we have to correct each other. We have to help each other. What I'm talking about is sometimes people don't have a, have a full understanding of, of certain things. And that's okay. They're They'll get there. That's why we're supposed to iron sharpens iron. That's why we're there for each other. You know, we're supposed to help each other, encourage each other, exhort each other daily. This is why it's important for the body of Christ to be communicating with one another, talking with each other, encouraging and strengthening one another. So that way, those things in you that God has, has worked with you and taught you and, and brought victory to you in, you share those with others that may be going through that same thing right now. And that and then they have that that encouragement, that strengthening, you know, maybe they'll be able to hear from you what scripture you relied on and depended on to get you through that time. And maybe that's something that they can take and, and get in their lives and come, overcome. And see what I mean? It's just loving and, and caring and trusting that, that God will use us as the body of Christ to encourage one another, strengthen one another. He uses his word, and that should be the main thing that you're going off of. When you're sharing with people, make sure that you're sharing the word of God. You know, um, 
I mean, I thank God for Grandma Minnie's uh, recipes. They're wonderful. Thank you, thank you, Lord, for them. But Grandma Minnie's recipe is not going to get you past that trial you're in. What's going to get you past the trial that you're in is the Word of God. So share the Word of God, amen, in, in love. Share it. And, and uh, you know, if you want to share Grandma Minnie's stuff, I'm sure people appreciate that too. Praise the Lord. Okay, so verse 25 says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you make clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but within they're full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside may be clean also. And this is, this is what we're saying. You, you go and you can polish up the outside of, of, of the cup, but if you never clean the inside of it, man, it could be filled with all kinds of bacteria and and all kinds of stuff that you don't want to have any part of. Can you imagine going to a restaurant saying, yeah, I'll take that cup right there that'll, uh, you know, the one that you cleaned on the outside. The inside, don't worry about it. I'm not, it doesn't matter to me. Y yeah, right? You going to do that? You, you, want a, you want a plate like that too from a restaurant? They're going to bring you a plate with somebody's leftover food, been there for three weeks, but as long as they clean the outside of the plate, you're okay with it? Then clean the inside? With all that gunk and stuff's been growing there? God's wanting us to make sure that we clean the inside first. Amen. He's telling the Pharisees, hey, you got to get this right first. You see, we need to be born again. We need to be changed from the inside out. That's why our outside doesn't happen as fast as the inside. The inside happens immediately. When you, when you repent of your sins and trust Christ, he, you are born again. You have a new heart. A new, you're a new creature in Christ Jesus Old things are passed away. All things become new. You're brand new in Christ. The inside's got to change first. And this is why religion is so deadly because religion in itself that tells you, oh, you got to just uh, work harder and you got to, you got to, you know, do all these outward works first for to be acceptable to God. You'll never be acceptable to God that way. No amount of good works that you could ever do will make you acceptable to God. The only thing that makes you acceptable is coming in the way that he prescribed, and that's through Jesus Christ. You must come in through the door. You must come in through repentance and trusting in Christ and the sacrifice that he made once forever for all sin. You must trust him and what he has done. That makes you acceptable to God. Then you can come boldly before the throne of grace and obtain you know, mercy and help. You know, in a time of need, you can come before God boldly when you're in Christ. But you come in boldly, be, trying to come boldly before the Lord without Christ in your life is, is like a, uh, a high priest having sin in his life and trying to get into the Holy of Holies. He just dropped dead. That's a good thing he had a rope around his waist so they could pull him out. What I'm saying here is get the inside fixed up first. Amen. Get the heart changed. Then you got to renew your mind with the Word of God, you know. And as you do that, you'll change. You will change. I can say for for a fact, I can see my life how I've changed a lot, and there's still a lot left for me to change, you know, in in my life. That God is still working on stuff. He's still He's still working on me, you know. Um, I just asked my wife. You can ask her, you know, if if you want to know that, you know, she'll she'll tell you. The Lord's still working on me. He's working on all of us. If you're willing, amen? If you don't harden yourself in pride and arrogance thinking that you got it all together and you don't have anything left to learn. If you're in that place, you're just right where these Pharisees and scribes were. And you don't want to be there because God's prescribing woes to them. Not good, amen? He says here, um, Verse 27, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanliness. Even so, ye outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within you're full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Psalm chapter 5. Psalm 5 verse 9 says, for there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is very wickedness. Their throat is an open sepulcher. They flatter with their tongue. You know, um, the very next verse after that, well, you know, the very next verse says, just going to read it for you. Verse 10, destroy thou them, O God, 
and let them fall by their own counsels. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against thee. Wow. Wow, right? Not a good place to be. <laughs> Not a good place to be. These, these, um, you know, the, the whited sepulchers, do you know why they whitewashed the sepulchers on the outside? It's because um, they didn't want to accidentally touch these grave sites and be unclean, ceremonially unclean for a week, for seven days. So they, they didn't want to touch it, they, so they painted these things white, so that way people would know where they were and they could avoid them. And that's, that's what they did. But they beautified them, they were pretty and very nice looking and everything, but inside it was still, you know, full of dead men's bones. And this is what these guys were, were like. You know, the outside of the Pharisees, man, they had the phylacteries that they had put on their forehead and their hands. You know, they, they had even enlarged those. They had long robes. They had tassels that were super long, longer than anybody else's because they were so righteous, right? They, they, they held out big places in the marketplace. They made extremely long prayers. They, they prided themselves in their adherence to the very meticulous pieces of the law, yet they were not right with God because their heart wasn't right. That's why your heart's got to be right. You could do all the outward stuff. You can, um, you could have the three-piece suit. You could have, ladies, you could have the biggest hat on the planet that anybody's ever seen, the most dignified dress that anybody's ever seen. Yet if your heart's not right, you're not right. You need Jesus. So don't let it be the outward let it be the inward. That's what's got to be right first. And it's not the, oh, well, God knows my heart. Yes, he does. That's why he, the Savior went to the cross and died for our sins, because the heart of man is desperately wicked. That's why you need to be born again. You need a new heart. God to give that to you in Christ. Amen? And as a Christian, when you come to Christ, remember, you're not like you were. You're changed. You're a new creature. So stop acting like you didn't have any, anything happen unless nothing happened. If nothing happened in your life, then you maybe need to come back to Christ. You need to come to him. See, sometimes people make a profession with their lips, but it's not in their heart. It happens. You see it? These massive crusades that used to have, uh, Billy Graham crusades, it, you know, have thousands of people come up. Yet out of those thousands of people that came up, only a handful would, would truly be following the Lord would truly be repentant, would truly be born again, and the rest just disappeared. Remember the seed that's sown by the root? You know, some Satan comes immediately to steal the word. Immediately. Thanks be to God, there's some people in our church right now that came that came to Christ through through one of those crusades. Thanks thanks be to God. God God can use anything, right? He can use anything in anyone to lead someone to Jesus Christ. He can. He, uh, man, he, you know, maybe you think that you don't know too much scripture, but if you know Jesus died for your sins, man, share that. Share John 3, 16. If that's all you know, share it, right? That's all you got to share. It shouldn't be because you should be reading daily. You should be in the word of God daily. You should be hiding that word in your heart that you don't sin against him, amen? You should be building yourself up on your most holy faith. You should be doing that daily getting into the word of God, not neglecting his word. I I think that that's kind of super important too because if um, if you love him, if you truly love him, don't you want to know what he had to say? Don't you want to have that, that close relationship with him? Well, get into his word. His word is for you. His word, it's for you. So find out what he has to say. Amen? I, I can tell you this is just an example, a natural example. You know, I love my wife. I love her. She's fantastic. And, and I love spending time with her. I love hearing her share with me from her heart what, what things that she, you know, she values, things that are important to her, uh, things that are challenges to her in her life, things that she's, she's dealing with. I love spending time with her, hearing her and talking with her. You know, I have that, that love for her. Well, in the same way, guys, you know, 
we should have a love and, and a passion for God, for his word and what he says. We should love to know his will and his, and his desire for us. We get that from the word of God. We find that out. Have a passion for him. He loves you. Um, verse 29 says, uh, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets, garnish the sepulchres of the righteous, and say, If we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore, you be witnesses unto yourselves that your children are them which killed the prophets. Fill ye up the measure of your fathers. Now, he says this, fill ye up the measure of your fathers. Why? Why? Because he already knows they intend to kill him. That is their intent. These guys are saying they wouldn't have taken part with the, the, the persecution the, the, in the, the murder of, of the prophets of God, which happened before. They killed the prophets, right? These guys, you know, take care of their, their sepulchers. They make them all nice looking and everything. And they say, yeah, we wouldn't have done that. But they're even more guilty because they wanted to kill the Prince of Life, Jesus Christ. They wanted to murder the Son of God. How much more? This is why God says, here, fill ye up the measure of your fathers. Yeah, they did. <clears throat> Imagine that these were the men that were supposed to be the religious leaders of the day. And they didn't even know God. Verse 33 says, Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? You know, John warned them. And remember before John the Baptist He's told them, he, he says, you generation of vipers, you know, remember when they came to, came to him? And he says, who warned you to flee the wrath to come when they came to see John? The problem was, is they came to see John, but they didn't believe John. They, there was no repentance. And here we see them uh, formulating in their hearts to kill Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the promise, the, the promised one. I mean, they 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 were going to, they were planning to, to murder him. And he says, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? And see, outside of Christ, you can't. There's only one way to life, and that's through Jesus Christ, who is life. He is eternal life. And if you try to come any other way, you won't make it. So my encouragement to you today is, you know, how can you escape the damnation of hell? Repentance and trust in Jesus Christ as your Savior. And you can do that today. And as Christians, uh, for you, remember this and preach that message. Preach it. Let as many people know as you can while we have time. Time is running out. Take a look around. Look at the world and what's happening in our world today and understand and realize our time is short. We have a job to do. We need to be busy about doing it. Use every avenue you have available to you. I know some are not right now. Use what you have available to you to get the good news of the gospel out. There is little time remaining. Amen? Well, God bless you. I pray that you were blessed today. And... Uh, and I got two prayer requests we're going to pray for right before we close. So we're going to close after we have these prayer requests. What are the last two? Last two. Okay, prayer chains. We've got two prayer chains to add to our list here today. Uh, pray for Coco Seward's daughter and family. They're surrounded by fire in Moscow, Idaho. So um, that's an urgent prayer request right there. And also pray for Casey Leedy. She's under a lot of stress and having trouble breathing due to the smoke in the air. Also, another urgent request. And so let's go to the Lord and pray for Coco Seward's daughter and family and uh, Casey Leedy. Let's pray for them and we'll uh, pray for uh, you as well. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come before you right now uh, praying for uh, Casey uh, Leedy, first of all, Lord, that uh, you would help her breathe with this uh, the smoke. I pray that you would... Uh, Give them uh, an area that they can go to that's got some uh, clean air. And uh, Lord, I just pray that you would help her with the breathing issues. 
Pray for Coker Seward's daughter and family there in Moscow, Idaho, that are surrounded by fire right now. I ask that you would please, Lord, preserve them and keep them. And Lord, protect those people there. Protect all that are affected by these wildfires, Lord. I pray for a quick resolution of these things. Help us, Lord, today and as we uh, turn to you, we repent of, of sins. Lord, we know our nation has, um, has not been pleasing in your sight. And God, we just, we just ask forgiveness. We ask that you would give our leaders and, and wisdom and understanding in what they're doing. Pray for our nation that it, they would turn to you. God, I pray that you would make open avenues available for us to get the gospel message out to as many as we can while we can. And Lord, we do thank you and praise you for every opportunity that we have to share Christ with everyone. We just give you praise and thanks in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. May God bless you. I pray that you're able to join us tonight at 6 o'clock uh, for our evening service. God bless you and have a blessed day in Jesus.